Hello everyone, and in this video we are going to be talking about Michaelis-Menten kinetics, the Michaelis-Menten equation, as well as Lineweaver-Burke plots, and this is a way of visualizing the types of graphs that we get. And so the goal of this is for us to be able to model enzyme or catalyst kinetics and observe the effects of inhibitors, as well as other things that can affect the rates of our reaction. And so to get into this, basically what happens in our studies is we're going to see something like an enzyme. This enzyme is going to take a substrate or a reactant and what enzymes do or what catalysts do is they help stabilize the transition state of these substrates that we can encourage a reaction to happen by lowering that activation energy that's going to be required. So we form this enzyme substrate complex and then generally these enzyme substrate complexes will then form a product, P, and then we're also going to regenerate our enzyme, E, so it can go on and continue to react more of our substrate. And so um, the key thing to take home here is that you have a finite amount of enzyme, and the thing that we're looking at with these Michaelis-Menten plots and these lineweaver burke plots is how do things change when I increase the amount of substrate present? And how can things change when I do things like introduce inhibitors that we'll talk about too uh, in later videos? And so basically what we're gonna see here is that our substrate concentration, which for our purposes I'll just denote as S, is this thing where as we increase the amount of substrate that is available to our enzyme, we're going to see an increase in the rates of our reactions but to a point because we only have so many reaction sites available. There's only so many enzymes present. So unless we increase the number of enzyme active sites we have, then we're gonna eventually run into this Vmax thing. And so that's the reason why you see this asymptotic or asymptotic line. And the other thing to make note of here is that as we plot this stuff, uh, we're going to note the following. And this is an equation that typically um, it's not too hard to memorize, but it's just something that you'll see time and again. So the rate of the reaction, which Tom always denoted V, is equal to V max times the concentration of the substrate. And we're going to divide this quantity by Km, this michaelis menten constant. And then we're going to add to it our substrate concentration S. And so immediately, I think people like to look at what is this Km value? What is this constant thing that we've just defined here? And so Km is something that intuitively in my brain, I think of as inverse substrate affinity. Now, what I mean by that is if our Km is really big, that means that our active sites on our enzymes don't really care too much about the actual substrate. And so for us to get to Vmax, we're gonna to need to add a lot of substrate to get there. Whereas if Km is very small, our substrate affinity will be very high. So the active sites that the enzymes or the catalysts provide are gonna very quickly grab an actual substrate, latch onto it and help facilitate a reaction. And so the way in which you can calculate Km from these plots is pretty simple. So basically, when you have determined what your maximum reaction rate is, when you get to that halfway point, you look at what your substrate concentration is, and wherever that substrate concentration is tells you what Km is. And so again, this kind of ties back in with what that intuition is, which is telling us that if we've got enzymes that are really great at grabbing and facilitating a reaction uh, and helping us uh, get to that maximum rate quickly, then we don't need to add much substrate because there's that really great affinity. Uh, the contrapositive of this is also true in which if we have a weak affinity for our substrate, then we need to add a lot of enzyme. And so now that we've done this, another thing that people commonly will do is take the double reciprocal of this plot. And so reaction rate, which commonly you'll see denoted as that V thing, um, if you take the reciprocal of this, which is to say one over that thing, and you do the same thing for substrate concentration, you create this thing called a Lineweaver-Burke plot. And so in these Lineweaver-Burke plots, we're basically just plotting the same exact information, but in a different way that helps us very quickly identify what is the Km constant as well as what is our Vmax. And so on these Lineweaver-Burke plots, as you can see here, the 
y intercept is equivalent to 1 over v max. And we can also see how the x intercept is equivalent to minus 1 over km. And so as we do things like introduce inhibitors uh, to our enzymes, we can see how these plots will change very easily. And so a typical test question you might get is a side-by-side -side comparison or an overlay of two of these plots. And our goal is going to be to figure out what type of inhibitor it is. And so that's something that I will discuss in a future video. So this is going to wrap things up for this introduction to Michaelis Menten, the Michaelis Menten equation, as well as line weaver plots. And I'll see you guys next time.